to another video episode of my podcast. My name is Cheryl and this is Cappuccino Crafts, my little channel on YouTube and my corner of the general interwebs where I like to talk about knitting and crochet and books and TV and movies and other life and general chatty things that I want to share with you. Thank you so much for watching this video and choosing to spend a little bit of your time with me. I really hope that you enjoy it. So please settle in, get yourself a delicious beverage. I am enjoying some Darjeeling tea in my favorite tea mug. Mm. Yes, so get yourself a delicious beverage and your yarn, your hook, your needles, or your embroidery, or your spinning, whatever you like, and let's enjoy some chatty, crafty time. So it has been another big week. Um, there's, uh, yeah, I've been keeping up with stuff pretty well, so I, I feel I, I feel like it was a good week for me. Um, I hope it was a good week for you. And let's start with the crafting. Exciting news. I started a new project. Yeah, I really needed a new project. Um, and you are probably sick of seeing, like, for three weeks in a row, just my one project. Just keep it on. Um, yeah, I am very excited. Um, I'll give you the backstory of this project. Um, way back in early June, I pre-ordered a kit, which I, I, I can't remember if I've ever ordered a kit before. It's not my usual thing. Um, I maybe have bought one kit before, but I, yeah, it's very rare. Um, but it, I needed a boost and, um, I follow Lady Dye Yarns. This kit and the um, Knit Along Crochet Along is all organized by her. And she dyed the yarn for it. And I pre-ordered from her on her website. Um, and Lady Dye Yarns is amazing. I've never ordered her yarn before, but I followed her on Instagram for a long time. Her yarn is beautiful. Take a look at her website. Um, and just, she's a great person to follow on Instagram too, because she really is outspoken and has a really strong voice for, um, social change and for, um, yeah, <laughs> for basically political and social change, um, is she's very upfront and has a lot of really good things to say. I've caught a couple of her Instagram lives and they were very, very good. Um, and uh, yeah, so I really like her and her, her work is beautiful. So I wasn't worried about buying a kit blind because this is a mystery knit along, crochet along. You don't know the color. You don't know what the pattern is going to look like. It's a mystery. You're going in blind. But I trust her and um, the, the knitting designer that did the mystery pattern for this is Aroha Knits, who I also follow on Instagram. I've knit her Makariri shawl, which is one of my top favorite projects of all time. And I love wearing it. And I loved knitting it. And so I 
I wasn't worried that it was going to be, in the end, a project I didn't like the look of and that I wouldn't enjoy it. So I jumped in, I was excited, and it arrived uh, just this last week, just a couple days ago. Actually, today is Monday, August 17th, and this arrived uh, just over the weekend that just passed. So came, I got it on Saturday, and I got the yarn wound up. This is the yarn. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at that color. Are you tired of this color yet? <laughs> I didn't even know it was going to be this color. It's not my fault. But you know that this is one of my favorite colors too. So, yay! Um, and the colorway is named Umbrella. And it is on her... Uh, merino superwash merino base and here is the start of a shawl it's just a little baby a little baby thing right now it looks like a little tiny swatch um i think it's so small that the not the it, the mystery isn't given away or spoiled um but yeah, so the pattern just came out. So I got the code to get the pattern, a coupon code to get the pattern for free because it was included with the kit. So I got the, I put in the code and I got the pattern in my library and uh, downloaded it and it's, the way mystery patterns worked, I've only ever done one before. I, mystery patterns, mystery knit-alongs are not my usual thing at all. But uh, this is the second one I've done. And the way that they work is that they're released in parts. So you just get one clue at a time. And you work the first clue, and then you go to the next clue. And most of the time, the clues are released, like, once a week. So you have a week to get through that clue and be ready for the next. Yeah, so I cast on yesterday. And... It's so cute, that little baby, that little baby shawl swatch. <laughs> so cute. And in the, in the package with the kit came this project bag with her logo. That's the Lady Die Yarns logo. And look at that beautiful sheep face. Look at that. I love it. And it says, it's not a resistance. It's a revolution, and the theme of this um, mystery craft along is craftivism, and it's about getting excited and motivated and mobilized to vote and to encourage other people to vote, uh, specifically in the United States in November. Um, but yeah, to like get excited and help us to, um, to get our friends and family excited for voting in November. And there's this pin. I already put it on my bag. This came in the package too. Knitter for President. which I think is awesome. I love it. It's so, it's so, I, yeah, I love that pin. And oh, I need a sip of tea. Oh, that's good. So, yeah. Oh, 
and it came also with stitch markers in the package. This says, Empower the Vote. And this one is the 19th Amendment, which I'm pretty sure is the Suffrage Amendment, Women's Suffrage. So it's all on a theme. And do do do. I am also still enjoying and making progress on my crochet. This is my cotton lace summer crochet scarf. The pattern is named blue denim because that's the yarn it was um, designed with. And it is uh, a free pattern by DMC. They make um, embroidery floss and crochet thread and things. So yeah. So my blue denim pattern, I, I really like that scarf and that's all the crafting. But it was exciting to, to start a knitting project. Lots of reading. Reading has been going gangbusters. And so I'm excited to talk to you about books. Um, here, I'm going to look at my notes because I don't remember all the authors' names and things. Um, there's a book that I finished this week that I forgot to tell you that I'd even started. It was, it's a short book. It's another novella. And so they go so fast. And um, I hadn't even told you that I'd started it. Um, but I finished it this week, and I had it from the library. And so I listened to it on audio from my library, and... It was, This is How You Lose the Time War. And it has two authors, Amal El-Mutar and Max Gladstone. And it is about enemy agents in the time war. So each of these authors wrote one agent side. And the chapters go back and forth. One chapter is one agent, and the next chapter is the other agent. So, um, enemy agents, and they start secretly exchanging letters. So this is partially an epistolary novel, but not completely, because it's not only the letters. And oh, it's so good. So these secret agents and they're exchanging secret letters and they're on opposite sides and it's all very tense and exciting and dangerous. And the time war is huge. And of course, this is a novella. So it doesn't really go into a lot of detail about a lot of the things, but it just leaves, it gives you enough to feed your imagination, to fill in the and the outer edges and the spaces in between, which is kind of fun. Um, I I often read like bigger, like chunkier and like fully explained <laughs> novels, but this style of a novella. And it was the same with the deep because they do, they can't give you everything in in all those pages, but they give you something for your imagination to build on and fill out. And both this novella and the deep are also super well written, like beautiful prose, beautiful writing, and it's inspiring to your imagination. And um, 
This is also kind of a Romeo and Juliet style, like enemies on opposite sides love story. Because as the letter correspondence progresses, it they fall in love and um and that makes it even more dangerous um so it's it's exciting it's beautiful it's intense it is like so imaginative and it's it's a really really good so good um i finished another book this week too. I finished that collection of essays called Who Do You Serve? Who Do You Protect? about police brutality in America and specifically against um, black community in America. So that book is important. It's so good. I learned so much and that's one of the reasons I read it slowly. I, um, it was so full of information and ideas and it's a new topic to me. I don't know a much, I don't know much about policing in America and the history of policing. This gave not only, this did go back into some of the historical roots of violence and policing in America and I did not this I mean I knew this was a new problem but I didn't know it was like all the way to the beginning um and like so there was a lot um and all of that part was in the first set of essays. It's divided into two parts, roughly half and half of the pages. Um, and then the second part, those essays are about what to do, about activism, about ideas and proposals for making changes and different ways to structure and organize around community services and mental health and um, d different structure to the in criminal justice and organizing and activism and protesting and different ways of protesting and so it was about what to do suggestions and ideas and actions in response to what you learned in part one which was a great thing to do um to give concrete and, and actionable, positive actions and positive ideas of how we can make a better community and better society and what kind of society do we want to be and how can we start to go in that direction. So part two was so important too and it um it gave a little bit of hope not that it's going to be easy it's complicated and hard and difficult and we may never get to the our ideal like best goal i mean but it gave a hope and something positive to think about it can be better in the future and I needed that <laughs> I really needed that that was really good so I highly recommend this book um, who do you serve who do you protect and I started another book 
I started The City of Bones, which is a young adult epic fantasy by S.A. Chakraborty. It is based on like Middle Eastern and North African mythology. So not the usual like medieval European kind of setting. Um, and I haven't read a fantasy world like this before. So it's um, it really, really good, really um, refreshing and new to me. And it's epic. Like <laughs> there's a lot in this book. So much world building, so many characters, a lot of politics. There's Jin and a whole bunch of other mythological, magical kinds of beings. And it is so big and ambitious. And I am enjoying the world. And there's only one thing that I'm having a little trouble with. And um, that is the romance part of it. Um, it's not heavily focused on that aspect. There's so much to the story, but there is a romance angle and I am not enjoying it. I don't think the characters belong together. I don't see why there's the attraction. I don't feel the chemistry. I don't want them together. I think it's a bad idea. I just, I'm like, I think they are a terrible match and I don't like it at all. So it's not ruining the book for me at this point because everything else is working for me. So we'll see how I feel at the end. And I watched a wonderful movie. I watched Knives Out over the weekend and I loved it. I It is a mystery whodunit satire. It is so funny. It is so smart. It is well written. It, the, the cast is amazing and their performances are great. Everything about it I really, really like. And visually it's the visually it's good it's it's uh it was great one of the best movies i've seen in a while um so i think a lot of people have already seen it i know it's been out it came out uh a long time ago i mean not less than a year but it's not like, oh, it's only been out for a month or two. No, it came out like, I think, anyway, it's, it's not new, but I finally watched it. And if you've watched it, I'd love to chat about it in the comments w with you um, or any other movie recommendations that you have. I'd love to hear book, movie recommendations and talk about that kind of stuff in the comments. I'd love to hear about what you're crafting um, and, and what kind of beverage. If you are drinking a beverage while you watch an episode, I'd love to hear what your beverage is. What, what do you like to drink? Um, also, there, we, I had another game time over Zoom with my sister, and we played Unstable Unicorns. It is a card-based game, not a board game, and it's got unicorns, and the unicorns are so cute. Look at here on the box. 
look at how cute the art on the cards is and it's a lot of fun although we the rules when you read them through it seems pretty straightforward and simple but as we were playing there were some things that we were like some details it felt like were left out and we're like well would you do it this way or would you do it that way and so we kind of had a little bit of trouble getting into the flow of the game but we learned from our first experience and I actually watched a YouTube how to play video after we were done and that helped there's a few I've only watched one but I might watch another one or two before we try and play it again um, so there are some playthrough videos on YouTube that you can find, which was helpful. But I think once we get comfortable with the game, it's going to be a ton of fun. Um, and there are expansion packs. So if, if this becomes a favorite game, I'm going to... There's an expansion pack I already know. That is the first one I want if we do that. <laughs> and it's the zombie apocalypse expansion pack. <laughs> Are you surprised? If you've been watching for a while, maybe you're not surprised. But yeah. But the, um, there are like several ex expansion packs available though. So that could be a lot of fun. I'm going to take another look at my notes to see if I've left anything out. Oh, yeah. Library. I have been um, listening to some audiobooks from the library. That Both of the novellas I recently read were from there. And, um, and an e-book. It wasn't available on audio from the library, but the ebook was, so I read that one. But um, I have been really happy for those uh, internet library services. But I found out a couple weeks ago that my local library is now doing drive up appointments to pick up hold. So you can pick up physical books. You can put them on hold through the app and then you can set up a drive up pickup. So um, more library services are available. Um, and I wonder if a lot of libraries are doing that. Um, are you using your local library and how is your library working during this time with the you know with the virus um but yeah so i was really glad to hear that um yeah you, the drive up is available for physical library books which is good news um so i think that is everything I hope that you and your loved ones are well and safe. Um, I hope that all your creative projects and um, your reading are going well and that you um, are, fun are really enjoying them. And take care and see you next time. Bye bye.